everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the project and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand in the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will be sharing the link in the chat for our channel. And if you've not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, please feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session. Very exciting. Today is the first session of the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. And in order to kick, out this, kick off this event, um, our speaker, Bruno, has a little word of introduction for you. I'm going to play that right now. Hello, friends. My name is Bruno Capuano. I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And I want to welcome you to the Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. I'm a Latin person in my, in my 40s. I am in my office today. I am wearing a Reactor Black T-shirt. And again, I'm so, so happy to be with you in these five-week programs. We are going to try to help everyone who want to get the PL900 certification. And hey, this is also going to be super fun. The idea of the bootcamp is to help you to get prepared to pass the PL900 exam. And the PL900 is an amazing certification, which basically helps people who are in that, in that path to get a better understanding of the Power Platform uh, and the tools that we have in the Power Platform. An example, if you want to automate the process, how you can use Power Automate for that. If you want to get more insights about your data, you can use Power BI. The whole idea of the plot of this bootcamp is to get is to help you to get prepared for this certification. PL900 is a great certification. And hey, because there are changes going on the Power Platform, this exam is going to be, they're going to be, we are going to have a new version just at the end of the bootcamp. We are going to add extra sessions to cover those changes when we arrive at the end of September. Also, there is important that you need to know that there is a study guide that you can download for free. You can get and have a chance to review the sample questions. And there are two ways that you get, can get prepared for this exam. You can get an instructor, let pay the course. You can pay for an instructor. You can pay for a course to get prepared. And the other one is the free version, which is use one of the Microsoft Learn learning path. And this is going to be our main focus during this bootcamp. And let's also quickly talk about the learning path, the PL900 Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals. As you can see on the main page, there are no requisites. You can get here clean and start to learn. This learning path uh, includes 10 modules. These 10 modules are focused in a general uh, introduction to the Power Platform, how you can use uh, Power Apps, introduction to Power Apps, how you can build a Canvas app, there are so many amazing information here. During this bootcamp, we are going to review these modules. We are going to learn together and we are going to get specific insights in each one of them. So you can remember, you can get better knowledge about the Power Platform. And this is how the bootcamp is going to work. Remember, we talk about that the learning path includes 10 modules. And the idea for this bootcamp is each week we are going to cover two modules and we are also going to have community hours, office hours to talk about this. So we are going to spend 10 weeks all together. You can take a look at the full agenda and have all of the dates and the links in our main Power Platform Bootcamp page and also the links to the community hours meetings. And important, the idea is that every week on Monday and Tuesday, we are going to review a module and then we are going to have community hours of 30 minutes on Wednesday to 
basically talk, network, get to know each one better, and also to answer a specific question that you may have around the exam or the modules. And it's also important that the first week, because it's labor there in North America, we are not going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We are going to start on Tuesday. Also, important to note, all of the modules review session are going to be recorded. You can come back, you can review, you can take a look in the Reactor YouTube channel and watch again the module recording. And also, the community hours are not going to be recorded. I, we want this to be an office, an, an open, and a super safe space so everybody can ask questions. So we are not going to record that, but we are going to be open to host more community hours if needed. So again, please take a look at the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp page where you are going, where you're going to have links to each of all of the sessions. You're going to see the dates and the time for everything. And hey, feel free to contact us if you have any more questions. And that's it. This is a super quick intro that you probably noticed I recorded to Don. So I don't need to do this every time during these 10 sessions. And Let's start. Let's start with the bootcamp. I'm so happy to be here and I hope that you enjoy and learn a lot with us during these five amazing weeks. So, hello everyone. This is me live. Thanks a lot for all of the people who were saying hi in the chat. Someone was asking a question about if we are going to record the sessions. Yes, all of the sessions are going to be recorded. You can access the a playlist later with all of the recording sessions. Important, as I mentioned, we are only going to record the module review. We are not going to record the community hours. The community hours, uh, we want to have an open space. Everybody should be comfortable to ask questions. So that those ones are not going to be recorded. But yes, it's one of the modules. And again, uh, please, re please hey, let's have a nice time. This is a super fun, super fun topic to talk. And let's go directly there. Uh, I will try to make the intro video shorter. I realized it was kind of longer, but I didn't mention in the video that we also have this amazing Cloud Skill Challenge. If you want to learn more, if you want to challenge yourself, if you want to participate and have kind of a competition with your friends, colleagues, whoever, you can sign up for this challenge. This is going to be reviewing the, the modules that we are going to see. And hey, we have 30 plus days to do this. And it's going to be also a fun way to, to learn. Alex is going to share the link. Here it is, the links of the of the challenge. If you go to aki.ms backlash power platform CSC2, there it is. It's all yours. You can sign up here and let's start. That's the idea. If you have any questions, I will try to answer the questions online. I am taking a look at the comments right now. It takes 20 seconds to, to read the to read the for me to get the comments. So I will try to see this and answer them online. But at the same time, I really, really want to connect with you. Feel free to drop your question. I will try to answer the question in the next session or even on the office hours or try to find someone who knows, really knows the topic and wants to do this. And the idea to do the Power Platform Fundamentals, it's all about, this is a super amazing set of the piece of technology. I'm a developer. I am not a low-code, no-code expert. I am learning here. This is going to be my learning path also to get the certification. And because we have this learning path in Microsoft Learn, this is also an amazing opportunity to go this. So today, you're, you're probably seeing that if you take a look at the learning path, we have modules there. Each module is it's different time. We, today's module is only 36 minutes. Uh, next Tomorrow is going to be 37 minutes. We have shorter, we have longer. I will spend the time that we need to spend in each one of the modules. And hey, once we are here, once we are learning, I will also try to see in real time what we have. Because I know the tools, I know deep how we can use it. So I will not read the modules. I am not going to uh, use the slides, but I will try to show you in real time if we are talking about virtual agent, what is a virtual agent? If we are talking about Power BI, let's take a look how this works in Power BI. Hey, Zigna asked a super amazing question. So do we need a Microsoft subscription to practice all the modules? No. I didn't want to do it today because I want to basically start to talk about the tools, but tomorrow, maybe on the community hours, I will show you how you can create 
uh, a, a labs account where you can get access to the tools, to most of the features of the tools, so you can practice the modules. That said, I will strongly, strongly advise everyone once you review all of your knowledge to go to the certification page. Let me get here the link. Uh, this is the uh, copy the link. Let me get the link. And there is, but don't do this today. It's going to be kind of tricky. But here you have access to where is Zoom it. Here in the certification page, you have access first to a PDF, which is the formal and the, I'm sorry, the official study guide. And then you have access to free sample questions to get the exam. So I am going to show how you can create a, a labs account to access the, the tools. And also I will suggest you, I would advise you that take a look at the sample questions, take a look at the study guide and get more insights there. But again, I'm a developer first. So for me, it's all going to, to try to show how you can learn more, how you can use this tool, not just to read the modules and also show my tools. So let's start. Hello to the to everyone who is still here uh, saying hi from your location. It's super cool to see all the people that we have. Uh, initially, what we want to learn today, we are going to basically learn the components and features of the Power Platform. Power Platform is four, it's going to be five main, main tools. We are going to see the tools right now. And then we are going to talk a little about how we can use the Power Platform. Uh, talk about connector, how talk about how we can use this in our daily, daily life. So it's all about business. It's all about facilitate, uh, give us the chance as users to solve business problems, to, to, to create solutions without the need of hub developers. That said, we are even going to talk about fusion teams, how we can a functional, a developer, how we can create mixed group, which are an amazing experience. But as I said, no slides, just let's start. If you go to the Cloud Skill Challenge, you are going to be able to see it. So what is the Power Platform? The Power Platform uh, is, is a set of tools. It's main for four key products. It's going to be five because we are living in the middle of a change. But we have Power Apps. We have Power Automate, Power BI, and we also have Power Virtual Agents. How do you access these tools? How do you use these tools? Is If you have an office account at school or at work, you probably have access to Power Apps. You probably have access to Power Automate. I'm going to show you more details. Power Apps is, you think about this kind of, a, I want to create an application. My application needs to have kind of an interface. I want people to type data there. Or if I want to create an app, so when someone has a questions, they can go there, uh, type the question, submit, attach a document or attach an image, and this app, this app is going to get all of this info and send it to Teams so people can uh, read it there. So, Everything that we need to know, the, everything that we want to do that requires an interface is going to, we can do this in Power Apps. And we have plenty of out of the box solution in Power Apps. So an example, if you want to know how to access these tools and you have your account, I am using a set of samples account here, you can go to office.com. Let's go to office.com. You need to send, uh, sign in with your school or work account. And then here, top left corner, you are going to see the list of apps that you have here. And if you go to all applications, we are going to start to see here an example, kind of the combo of three Power Apps, oh, sorry, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. Let's do this here. And Virtual Agent is inside here. But here we can start to look at the Power App. And if you never, if you don't know what is a Power App, you can click on Power Apps, and you are going to get to an amazing home page where you are going to have resources to get started. You are going to get resources to create your oh, I'm with Alex to create your first Power App. This is a sample user. First I start doing here, so I'm going to choose uh, Canada phone number. I'm going to do this later, uh, and then you're going to start to work. Let me switch to where is Adele. There's, there, there she is. So if I go here again to, let me see where is my Abel browser. Close this one and open the 
this is Adele, so let's go here, let's go to the home of Power Up, as I said, and hey, you can start to create your Power Ups, and the idea is, hey, I want to share this Excel file with my colleagues. I have all of this info in, all of this information in SharePoint, and I want to create a Power Up. Two clicks later, you can start to do this. You, there is already some templates created, so an example I created here, this uh, site inspection uh, application. This is a sample of what you can create and what you can do with an application. And it's basically imagine that you are working, uh, you need to go and make some inspection in buildings, houses, or whatever. This is an app that you can share with your colleagues, part of the organization, part of the school team, that you can go here, start to do a, a new review and say, okay, I want to add a new review and I want to do these labs for the PL900 bootcamp no subtitle so i will use dps for my current location because it have access to the location if you're running this on your phone in example and then subtitle no no available no 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 description i can add photos i can do a lot of stuff and then it's going to basically create a new entry i have my entry here where we are going to have the info there. this application was created of the fly is created by, by a template. We have two versions of this application. We have a tablet view and we have a mobile view. Think that if you want to use Power Apps, you can create a, you can create application for tablet, for mobile, or even for web in a very simple way. And hey, you can connect this and say all of this data in an Excel file, in a SharePoint list, in any place, and you don't need to code. And you can share this with your colleagues. Once you have access to the app, once you have, when you want to do more, you can get here, start to update the data. In example, say, you know what? This is in Redmond Campus 2. And that's making this up. And I am saving this at this moment. Everybody who's, everyone who has access here to the, oh, not this one, the other one. Everybody who has access here to the information is going to see the same. And hey, this is what we can create with Power Apps. Power App is one of the most amazing tools that we have. Another piece, if we go back to, to our Power Platform, uh, to, the, to the second piece is Power Automate. And this is the main screen. This is what we need to learn today, which are the pieces that we have in Power Platform. Power Automate, it basically allows us to automate activities. We are going to work with the concept of triggers. So we are going to create flows that are going to be triggered by a trigger. So an example, a super popular trigger is an email. I want to do something every time that I have an email. Imagine that we are working, I work in a, uh, I work in a company and I receive emails with attachments and these emails and attachments has information that I need to review. So, Uh, so when I have this, I have a question here for Juan. I am going to address that one later. So every time that I have a new email with a specific characteristics, I want to do something, we can automate this. Every time that I save a new file in SharePoint or a new file in OneDrive, or every time, every Monday at 8 a.m., I want to review my emails, pick the most important ones, and forward them to my team so we can all work in this. And I'm using email a lot because we are still an email driving world. Uh, hey, that's something that I can automate. And let me show you an example here. Imagine that, let's again, go to Office, go to Power Automate. And I am using here, uh, my demo user for this one is someone named Sadel and she receives emails. She works in a sales team and she receives emails. So we have here a sample flow that is going to, well, let me edit the, the flow so we can take a look. So it's going to be triggered every time that she receives an email. But there is some conditions here. So when the emails arrives in the inbox, we are going to process the email, but the email need to, this trigger is only going, this flow is only going to be triggered when we have attachments. So we want, the idea here is that she is receiving emails with invoices, uh, sales data and more. So she wants to basically 
uh, process these emails and work with the, the content with the team. So after we receive the email, we are going to create a condition. And we define here a condition that, hey, if in the email subject we find the text income data, this is uh, just the text, we are going to have here a condition with two possible options, yes or no. We are not going to do anything on the note, on the no, I'm sorry, but on the yes, what, what we are going to see, what we are going to do is we are going to review, iterate each one of the attachments, and when the condition is satisfied, we are going to do two actions. We are going to save the attachment to a OneDrive folder. Adele, she has a OneDrive folder and she shares the folder with the team, so with her team, so they can all work together with files there. And also we are going to post a message in Teams so everybody knows that, hey, there is something there that we need to do. How we do this? And we are going to explain this later. We basically choose where is the location that we want to save the email, what is the file name and the file content. And then in Teams, we have here a simple, this is the team that we want to do. We want to send this message to a, channel, to a channel and with a specific message here. We can give it a try to this. We can give it a test here. So we are going to test this automatically with a recently used trigger. So I'm going to save and test. And this is basically start to process the flow. Imagine that we receive the email and the flow is running. And we can see here that, hey, first step, we receive the email. We have the little green check in there. So everything is working fine. So next step, there is an evaluation for the, condi the condition. So the condition was true. The condition was fine. And then for each one of the attachments, we are going to see here that the file was created in OneDrive. And then we have a message on Teams. If we go to Teams, this is the team that we are working and I think it was in US sales in general. We are going to see 1222 right now that others just write here a message saying, hey, we have the doc income from data, the income data from Denver that Alex sends here and we added to review in the shared folder. So if you want to automate something, Power Automate if you're tool. If you want to process emails, if you want to process file, if you want to do something every morning, this is the tool that's going to help you. And by the way, I am going fast in each, uh, in each one of the tools, but each specific module is going to be, we have modules specifically the, the dedicated to go deep and show how we can create a flow, how we can create a power app, and how, how we can do more. The next step, the next tool that we have here is probably one of the most popular one, Power BI. Power BI. <clears throat> uh, Juan was asking about licensing cost, and uh, that is this that can understand the question, but it's all about that if the licensing cost is going to to affect the usage of the Power Platform? Not sure. I am not a licensing expert. I know that the Power Platform is super popular today. We have tons of clients using the Power Platforms. If you have Office, you probably have access to, to the Power Platform. Most people probably don't know what they can do with the Power Platform. This is the idea to show what we can do to learn all together. And hey, four main tools, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, and Virtual Agents are the core of the of the power platform so power bi as i said so let's go back to the to the official documentation is a business like analytics service uh, it's super super cool in terms that we can quickly create dashboards and get insights from insights from the data we don't need to be a data expert to do this i mean we can work with data experts and they're going to do an amazing job. But if we have data in popular places like Excel or SharePoint, we can create a, a, create a dashboard and start to get insights. And when I say when I say insights, Power BI has a couple of very cool features. Like in example, you can ask questions to Power BI when you have dashboard using a natural language. So in example, if you create a dashboard using information about 
invoices and clients and dates and more, you can ask a question to Power BI, something like, show me the invoice that were over $10,000 last month for Canada. And Power BI is going to automatically create a list of the invoice. Or if you ask for the top three uh, invoices that do something in again in Canada, it's going to create a dashboard for that. So using the natural language is one of the for me, it's one of the most amazing, feature, amazing features that we have there. But it will also help us to get insights. We are Once we have the data there, we can ask Power BI, hey, Power BI, help me to understand this. And it's going to say, you know what? There is a full set of data that is going to flow in this pattern, but in these days, something happened. Take a look what happened on February, in example. And again, it's part of the Power Platform. It's part of what we have here. I have here a sample. Uh, Power BI dashboard that is part of the <coughs> is part of the, the samples that we have here. And hey, what we see here is that we have units, we have market shares, we have a lot of stuff here. We have manufacturers and manufacturers and regions here. And as I mentioned here, I can ask questions. I can ask a Q&A to, I don't know, an example, show me the top geo states by total units. Uh, oh, I need to enable this feature. Sorry about that. I disabled this to show how we can enable it when we talk about Power BI. But you get the idea. I can get here and I can ask these type of questions. And Power BI is going to be smart enough to help me under, understand the data. Sometimes our data is good, our data is fine, but we don't really understand what's happening there. And also there are other times where, because this is all about collaboration, someone shared the data with us and hey, this is a great tool to get more insights here. Ashley, Ashley asked a question here, we will have access to practice when we do the modules? Yes, there are, when we are going to move forward with the modules, at the end of the module, we have a Q&A, we have a knowledge check, and some of the modules also have tutorials. This is kind of an overview of all of the tools. So these first modules is not including any kind of activity. But yes, you have access and you can practice more, which is one of the modules. That's a good question. And John asked, asked that this is going to be recorded. Yes, this is going to be recorded. You can access the video 24, 48 hours later on a list that we have in the Microsoft Reactor channels for this. So. Moving forward for the fourth tool, the Power Virtual Agents. Bots are everywhere. We love bots and we love agents. I'm not going, not going to talk about bots anymore. We love agents. And the Power Virtual Agents is a tool that allows us to create bots slash agents without the need to code. Before, as a programmer, I am super, I created a lot of bots using basically coding, but the Power Virtual Agent is a tool that allows me to go in example and in order to go to the power virtual agents we need to go to power apps and we need to see the chatbot activity and we can create a bot here and we don't need to code in the bot we are going to basically use kind of a white canvas where we are going to start to define this is the question that we want to answer this is a possible explanation we have also flows we have a lot of stuff there and hey it's a super fun uh, way to do this. So in example, I created one super quickly here, a topic, I created a bot, and we have a topic here that is going to be triggered with these five faces. Show me the Power Platform Bootcamp main web page, where I can get more information, where I can uh, learn more about this. I define a message here. I can add elements and I define the message, so this is fine. But I can, I don't know, maybe and I can add here, call an action, show a message, redirect to another topic. I can start to do plenty of plenty of other things. I can define variables. I can see how people are using this. This is a super powerful tool. And again, we are going to go deep later. I don't want to start to do a lot of stuff here. but. It's also great because out of the box, we have analytics. We can learn how the people are using the bot in organization. This is literally has zero use. <laughs> this is a sample created for a start. We can publish the bots, and we can publish the bot to a lot of different channels. We can publish the bot to be used on Facebooks, on Teams, on a Slash. 
on Slack, I'm sorry, <laughs> on Slack, I'm sorry, we can do a lot of stuff. And hey, I have this bot here as part of Teams, as part of Teams. I can go here in this sample organization, search for this bot, and I am going to ask a question. So here is the PL900 bot. It's an agent creating the Power Virtual Agent. And I can ask a question about something like uh, where I can find more information of the Power Platform Bootcamp. I'm going to ask this. The bot is going to be triggered in the back. It's going to show my answer here, which is basically the same answer that I have in the in the topic. If I go to the topic and I open the, the first topic, this is what you are replying here with the link. And you can include here conditions. You can do plenty of other stuff. And hey, I also ask some kind of, OK, are you happy with the answer? So uh, did this answer your questions? I am going to say yes. Please rate the, your experience from one to five. I'm going to say five. And that's it. I am interacting with the bot. I, I have these bots available for all my organization without even need to code. And if I want to help people to get answers, if I want to help people, if I want to create an agent that is going to help search information, this is a great way to do this. And again, there is no need to code. You can directly do everything here with Power Virtual Agent. So once we have this, once we have the four main topics, the next pieces that we have here are kind of are not very visual ones, but they are important to understand. And again, this is the main page. This is what we really need to learn today. So we have AI Builder. AI Builder is a piece that we have available on the Power Platform that allows developers and uh, the first citizens and local no code users to add AI capability to solutions. So, in example, if you want to remember the, the scenario that we have that we receive an email with, uh, with sales data, if we have a PDF file there and we want to read this PDF, or we have an image of an invoice and we want to read the information on this image, we can add AI to automatically convert the image to text. And this text is going to be what we are going to use in our application. At the same time, if we want to create a model to recognize objects based on images, because we want to create a power app that someone can take a look, uh, I don't know, an inspection, someone can take a photo to a pipe, and we are going to try to detect defects, we can use AI Builder to create, to support these scenarios without the need of any code is going to be all out of the box. I'm going to show you a quick one right now. Then we have the Dataverse. The Dataverse is basically a big repository, a big database that we can use. And it's super secure. We can store the information there. We can use the Dataverse to integrate information from Excel files, from databases like SQL Server, from SharePoint files, for a lot, a lot of places. And then we can use this Dataverse in a fabrication. And finally, connectors. And connectors are one of the most amazing things that we have in the Power Platform. Because with connectors, we can basically connect everything. If we remember the scenario that we talked when we have received an email and process the data and save the data to OneDrive and then send the message to, uh, to Teams, so we are using three connectors there. One to connect with emails, one to save to OneDrive, and one and the third one to send to message to, to Teams. But if we want to know more, let me see if I can access here. Let me access my, let's go to, in example, Forward Automate. If we want to see how, what other connectors are available, the amazing, the most amazing things about connector is, is, of course, we are covering all of the possible scenarios in Office 365. That's kind of the idea. But then, if you want to work with another mail provider like MailChimp, there it is. You have connection for MailChimp. And you can trigger it, or you can actions. If you want to say email to MailChimp, you can use it. If you want to use, uh, if we want to use, uh, 
I don't know, if we want to send SMS or we want to do some advanced messaging scenarios, we have a partner, Twilio. They are amazing and they have a, a lot of activities that you can do, send SMS, integrate with their channels and much, much more. There it is. We have connector for this. We can even say, okay, you know what? In my company, we use Slack. So if we want to do something with the Slack, Slack, there it is. We have a Slack here. So there are plenty of activities that we can do. There are plenty. Of, uh, by the way, I'm saying this, but imagine that every time that someone saves an invoice in Salesforce, you want to do something and you are using Salesforce and you're using Office, you want to send an email, you want to send a message to Teams, there is also a connector for Salesforce. There are over 600 connectors, and it's an amazing ecosystem growing and growing and growing that allows us to do more and more here. I have a good question here for, from Jigna, that we can use a Mac to do this. Yes, this is all web-based applications, so you can use Edge on Mac or Chrome or any other browser. Uh, and yes, most of the most popular browsers are supported, so yes, you can use a Mac and learn all of the stuff there. So going back here, and remember, I spend a lot of time in this in this, <coughs> this part, in this section, this space of the module, because I really want to cover the tools. I'm a visual person. So when I think of Power Apps, I want to have an idea. Oh, yes, Power App, this was the application to do size inspections. Power Automate, yes, Power Automate was the flow where I can trigger every time that they have an email, I send a message to team. Power BI, super cool dashboard with data. Virtual Agents, Virtual Agent is a, is a bot that is going to help me get information. So I really want you to get those ideas. Then there is a section here. I am not going to read this. I'm going to give you my point of view about the business value of the Power Platform. I will strongly advise you to read it if you want, but the key one for me, one of the key topics here is that uh, we can be agile today doing solution. If we want to do something in our company, if we want to, an example, I want to save these 10 minutes that took me every day to process my emails, save the document and sell to my team in Teams, we have work to do. I can automate this. And after a couple of days, hey, I save 10 minutes. In a week, it's almost an hour. Those are four hours a month. And four hours a month, there's a lot a lot of money there that we are saving. And hey, it's all available for everyone. The idea of the, the Power Platform is to enable the support of these scenarios to anyone in the organization. So you can be more agile. You can do these kind of things. But you can also try and you can also play and test new ideas if you think that, hey, I want to create an app to solve this scenario with my company. This is something else that you can do. And because we start to work all together, we get to this idea, this concept of fusion development, where we can work together, professional developers, citizen developers, which is the people who are creating this application, for example, in Power Apps, and the end users, and we can create a flow where we can all learn together. And this is important because each one of these roles are filling the gaps that we have between technical ability, between business knowledge, and more, and we can do a lot of a lot of stuff here. Again, it's a super cool tool. I hope that at the end, besides certification, you really get to know the value of what we have. So the idea of the Power Platform is to basically help organizations solve problems, build solutions. When you have a need, we are going to try to help with the Power Platform. In my previous company, we built an amazing, an amazing learning system, all available in Power Platform for over 30,000 was in those times, probably bigger right now, used all around the globe. And hey, if we need to do this uh, as an app, that's going to be a challenge. And that's going to be a really, really big challenge. But what I really like about that solution example was that we can quickly fix, change, adapt to the new needs in a very, very simple way. And we can adapt this. We can extend this if your company, and we're going to see this right now. When we talk about connectors, as I said, we have connectors to read emails, to send emails, to read information from Slack, from Teams, to send information to Slack, to Teams. So we are working with data sources. We can do a lot of stuff. You want to add lines or rows to, uh, to an Excel files, there are a connector for that. 
and you want to read information from the Excel file, there is a connector for that. But we also have the chance, we also have the, 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 the possibility to create our custom connectors. If you have an in-house application that requires to be uh, requires to be integrated in the Power App, we can create, we have the chance to create a custom connector. This is, yes, almost pure development, even if you can do a lot of stuff without no code, but in these scenarios, probably you need to code something. But hey, you can even create custom connectors to integrate the whole Power Platform tools and everything that we have there with your custom application. So this is also important to understand that the connectors are a key part here because they are going to allow us to interact, to move data, to understand the data. And this is going to give us me, lead me to the final topic that about data loss, compliance, private, privacy, accessibility, and security mostly. Uh, Simon, I will put a hold, put a pin here. Simon asking a question, are we are going to cover management too? Uh, yes, not today. Today is a high level overview, but there are a couple of modules where we are going to see how we how you can do that. And that's a great question. I will leave the question there. So we are working with data. We talk about that we have connectors and we are moving data from here to there. So imagine that, as I said, we are receiving an email with sales data, an example, and we are uh, sending this email, saving this email to a shared folder, and then sending the message to Teams where we say, hey, team, there is some information there. Let's get to work. But if we receive an image, an example, or we receive a PDF, a PDF, and we want to know more, we can use a third-party connector that is going to pick up the image, an example, convert the image to text, we can do this in the Microsoft platform, but I'm going to use a third-party connector as a sample. And then with this text, we can follow the process. That's super cool. That's great. But hey, that's maybe that may trigger a warning around, hey, you are sending client-sensitive data through a third-party organization that you probably don't want to read this information because it's customer info. So there might be a warning there. A cool uh, way to solve this is that when you work with connectors, the connectors can be classified either as business or non-business. So you can, example, say that everything that comes that uh, is going to interact with the corporate email is going to be business related. And everything that is, or, or an example, in your personal OneDrive, because we have a connector for OneDrive for the personal edition, is going to be non-business. But the OneDrive for business version is going to be business. So if we receive an email with personal information, uh, sorry, with business information, and we, we tag this as business, that's connector, and the emails try to save this info on a personal, you're going to have a warning saying, hey, a business connector is trying to save information in a non-business scenario, so that's not going to be, you can't do this. And it makes sense because we need to be very careful with the information. So, we are going to show later in other modules how we do this, how we can uh, how we can tag and classify the connector to be doing this, but I hope it makes sense. But hey, think about this. If you have, if the company have uh, an agreement with the third party company that they are going to do this image, the conversion from email to text, and you have kind of a, an agreement between them, maybe you want to mark this third party connector as also a business one, and you can still work. There are plenty of activities. You can create properties in DLP policies. It's tough stuff to do there. About data privacy, as usual, Microsoft is committed to the highest level of trust, transparency, standards, conformance, and regular, regulatory compliance. Uh, all of the Microsoft Cloud products are built from the ground up to others, the most rigorous security and privacy demands for our customers. I read this. That makes sense. Everything that we are doing it's super nose here. The communication between, an example, your web application, like the site inspection and the cloud is secure. The information that is transported there is secure. It's all about security and we can get technical here how we are using TLS or other encryption and transport uh, protocols, but information is going to be secure. It's also going to be compliant. You can create 
an example, here in Canada, if you're working with client data and the client requires that the information from these clients need to be stored in the data center in Canada, we can create environments in the Power Platform. So all of the info are going to reside and live on those environments. You're probably going to have a question about where, how many environments do we have around the globe? I don't know. I will probably need to get the list. There is a list somewhere there for the next one, but it's all about data privacy and compliance and also accessibility. And this is a super important topic. We are creating applications. I am not very good creating applications. And uh, this is, oh, oh, this one, sorry. Let's go to this one. And uh, you can take a look here in the site inspection. Hey, this is a white background using a, a black, probably font. I think it's dark gray or black. But we also have a title here in the top, which is kind of an ugly orange or something like this. There is an accessibility checker. We have a tool that we can use where, sorry, uh, we have a tool that we can use that is going to help us to check our application, an example, to check a Canvas application. It's a Power App application. And we are going to start to see, hey, you know what? We have, you are missing labels. If you are working with, with some users that have some uh, view challenges, you need to add labels to the stuff so they know how to navigate. The same, you are doing, you are publishing a video that doesn't include uh, captions, so you don't have closed captions. So we have a tool here, Accessibility Checker, that's going to review your application and is going to give you the kind of a, a, a lot of tips that you can improve there. If you have very bad uh, colors combination, it's going to see, you know what, this is great, but the color contrast here is bad, so there are some accessibility challenge here. And hey, this is a tool that is part of the Power Apps platform. When we have a Power App, let me go back here. I think that I can edit this one. Let me go to the apps. Let's edit the app. There is a small tool in the toolbar that is going to check accessibility. And oh, sorry about that. Canada. And it's going to help my, help me to understand if we have accessibility issues. Uh, Joseph is asking that if we have a pro do we need a programming language for this bootcamp? No, we are not going to do any programming at all. Uh, uh, the idea is to help people to get uh, prepared to the to the for the certification, and it doesn't include programming. There are scenarios that we can do coding, not today, not the idea. So there it is. As I said, accessibility is super super important. Mm -hmm. We have accessibility tool here. Accessibility check, and we start to check, and hey, we find 95 errors here. I need to pick up this application, and I need to start to work on the application to make it accessible. I was looking forward to show you how we can have the check of accessibility. And finally, going back here to the data loss correction, uh, that's it. Uh, that's the full idea of the intro. I hope it makes sense. We have data, we have a lot of data. Uh, it's, it's a challenge to take advantage of the data. It's a, it's a challenge. Uh, we probably have access to the data, but we don't know how to work with this. So that's why the Power Platform with the main tools, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Virtual Agents, and then the AI, Dataverse, and the connectors features try to help us to work with this data, uh, to get better business decisions. Uh, to see how we can do stuff. What I really like is that we can try. We can try in a very simple way these kind of things. And once you try, you can easily scale. You can easily work with your IT team. If you have an idea, you make a kind of a quick laugh, and then you think it makes sense. You can work with your IT organization to say, hey, this makes sense. Can we deploy this up to all of my team, in example? And they can easily do this. So it's great. If you want to do... Uh, I don't know, rooms reservations, meeting reservations. Uh, I know that the calendar is a challenge, so there are plenty of opportunities to do, create, uh, and create the, the stuff there. This is a place to do here. So uh, Green is asking about how I am group and ungroup becomes in the taskbar. So, uh, I, not, I wasn't planning to show this, but this is four different edge profiles. 
I have profiles for each one of these users. So I have profiles for Adele, Alex, an administrator, my personal one, my work one. That's why I have all of these browsers open there. But hey, we could probably ask the, the Edge team to create something there for the, <coughs> for the profiles. So that's it. We have a knowledge check. Uh, I was planning to run right now kind of a Kahoot, if you want, to, to check the questions. I don't think we are going to have time. We only have 10 more minutes. But if you want to, if you really want to, to know more, let's take a look at the question. So let's, I am not going to do the, the knowledge. I will leave it to you. I don't want to give the answers here. But if you want to run a Kahoot, please raise your hands, say me yes, share your something in your in the in the comments. And tomorrow I will try to finish earlier. So we have at least uh, we will have at least 15 minutes at the end to do a knowledge check all together. So while I wait for the, do you want to do a knowledge, share knowledge text all together? Uh, Ahmed is asking, we will cover in SQL? No, I will show a couple of examples of how we actually say, yes, Kahoot. We are going to show a couple of sam a couple of samples of that use SQL, but no, no Kahoot. So thanks, Taha, for the session. Yes, we are going to do Kahoots tomorrow. So I have another yes here in Zigna. So hey, that's basically it. I don't want to steal more of your time. I will prepare and do some Kahoots tomorrow with this as soon as we start. So we double check this. And remember, tomorrow we are going to move to the next module. The next module is, oh, sorry. Uh, let's go here at the challenge. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the dataverse. We are going to talk about data. We are going to see how this is part of the Power Platform and what is more important. And remember, on Thursday we have community hours. If you have a question, I will we will be open there to to answer every every question that we have. So. I think that's it. I think we can make it short for today. 30 minutes uh, is going to be what we have. Please register for all of the incoming session. It's a pleasure. I still see the comments there, so super happy. Uh, yes, tomorrow we will start with the Q&A. We are going to start with the, with the Kahoot. So thanks, everyone, and see you tomorrow.